So it is Easter season, resurrection season, and here in the Northeast of America, it is also spring. And so there is around us uh, signs of, of life everywhere after a long season of winter and waiting for life to emerge. And so it's happening. We're in the middle of it right now. And, and yesterday in my Easter sermon, I, I mentioned the importance of discernment. Uh, and I think discernment at its heart is uh, the capacity to use both muscle groups, both spiritual muscle groups, the, 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 the muscles of, of receptivity and the muscles of activity, the, the capacity to, to wait for the right moment, for the right prompting, the right invitation, and also uh, the capacity to act and sometimes to act quickly and decisively assertively and so uh, that's the art that's the art of prayer that's the art of, of discernment and in the the acts of the apostles we're going to uh, journey with the disciples who are are practicing this art uh, as they uh, continue the ministry begun by Jesus of Nazareth and uh, so we'll be doing a sermon series on Acts and I'm going to read these words uh, from the first chapter of Acts and uh, as you listen to them, just pay attention to your own work of discernment. Um, there may be an issue that you're wrestling with uh, personally. It may be an issue that you're wrestling with with a group. It could be your family. It could be uh, you know your colleagues at work. It could be your church community. Uh, it could be pretty much anything in your life. So uh, be open to whatever the Spirit is putting upon your heart. I'll read these words, and then I'll lead us in a prayer, and I hope you'll continue the important and sacred work of discernment. Hear God's word for us today. After Jesus' death, he presented himself alive to the disciples in many different settings over a period of 40 days. In face-to-face -face meetings, he talked to them about things concerning the kingdom of God. And as they met and ate meals together, he told them that they were on no account to leave Jerusalem but must wait for what the Father promised, the promise you heard from me. For John baptized in water, and you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and soon. And when they were together for the last time, they asked, Master, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Is this the time? He told them, you don't get to know the time. Timing is the Father's business. What you'll get is the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be able to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all over Judea and Samaria, even to the ends of the world. And these were his last words. And as they watched, he was taken up and disappeared in a cloud. And they stood there staring into the empty sky. Suddenly, two men appeared in white robes and they said, you Galileans, why do you just stand here looking up at an empty sky? This very Jesus, who was taken up from among you to heaven, will come as certainly and mysteriously as he left. Let us pray. Lord, we know that uh, the spiritual life often involves staring into an empty sky. And so we ask you, for the courage and the wisdom and the humility to be able to do that now with whatever is on our heart today, whatever place of discernment that you've put upon our hearts. Help us to be open to your timing. Help us to be willing to wait and help us to be willing to act as you lead us. Help us to make space to listen to you and to be open to your invitation. And help us to trust that there is wisdom in waiting and wisdom and acting. And 
that you have our best intentions at heart. So as we stare into the empty sky, we give ourselves to your will and to your timing. In Christ's name we pray.